Welcome back to Bros League Heroes, everyone's favorite matchup that gets the people going. It's Terran versus Terran. Let me introduce, throwing that GLHF out at 20 seconds. Oh, and, and getting returned already a high level Bronze League match. Let me introduce Star Child. Even with the appropriate little Carbot logo there, Star Child in the red SCVs. On the other side, in the blue, on Data C. I don't know why I said that like it's a, oh my god, Data C, which is like the most common. Anyways, it's Astraeus. Not Astraea, but his little brother, who is still going through that uh, preteen edgelord phase where you name yourself after vaguely Greek sounding uh, names. Um, not that anyone does that ever, right? Astraeus. In the blue. And so far, so standard. Um, Data C not known for short games, but I don't think we can apply the generic time filling. Uh, oh, this is what the map and how the map works and yada yada. All, like, uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, all that matters is how long it's going to take to mine out many of the times in Bronze League Heroes. So we're going to see if that becomes relevant. Ah, yes, the quick wall off. Make sure to deny that information. Astraeus has nothing to hide, but also sees no reason to let his opponent know that. The SCV slaps down the command center in nearly the right location making sure that it does not get blocked. Of course, it does. it is able to fly, so it, it, it really isn't that big of an issue, even if it does. But SCV spots the command center. On the other side, Reactor, another barracks, drops the mule orbital. Well, the orbital a little later for Astraeus, but he's getting there. Okay. And off to a boring start, I will say. These two. Nothing nothing on the other side of the map. Even a scout. And then just backs off. Early expand? Okay. No Reapers, no Hellions. That question will remain uh, what they do end up doing. In fact, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take the liberty here, Jimmy. Uh, make sure we just rewind after, but... Building barracks, building depots. At this point, we are playing a single-player game. Complete. Great announcer choice. Uh, the question now: now place your bets. Twitch chat, place your bets. Whoever gets it right is going to get internet points. Give me a time when the first unit dies. So unit, not SCV. That add -on. Nice. SCV like exact second, not minute, to the second. So far, depots, fuge, oh, I don't, <laughs> fusion core. And I don't think that's for advanced ballistics. An armory as well. A scan. Do we have a counter scan? Are you going to let that go unanswered? You did actually drop meals. Unfortunately, the wall has walled in some of Astraeus' SCVs. Ah, another scan. He scans. He makes sure... Yep, that's... The, yep, he has the base. We got plus one mech armor on the way. It finally allows those SCVs to get past the checkpoint. We don't mind. We're already blazing past uh, some people's timers here. Uh, the battle cruiser is in production. You you might have expected. Now he, he took his he, he's timing it out with plus one. That SCV is contracted for four supply depots. It's not about the speed at which they finish. It's about the fact it, we know it'll get done. That's what's important. Battle cruiser nearly completed. You sped it up. Okay, so I did speed up the game, but that does not actually. Now this is believe it or not. That does not actually change the time at which units will die. It is not a measure of how much time we've spent without even smashing the like button or subscribing. 
it is a measure of of what is happening in the game. And the time in the game is Oh, you know what? Never. Never. Before I get too far into the makings of every lazy Star Trek episode, we'll bring it back to your normal game speed here. Uh, the ba- I was expecting the battle cruiser to um well the battle cruiser like you got to you got to have a shakedown cruise. You got to take it around. You got to take it for a quick hop around Pluto. You got to suck Captain Kirk out into whatever plot device that they they have to push him 50 years into the future so that way they can get him and Patrick Stewart to wait that's that Star Trek again. God. Um <clears throat> uh Raven's out. Uh I'm changing my... You can't change your guess. That's not what guess... I, it's not how it works. Wait. A medevac. A scouting medevac. A marine. Uh, all right. Uh, a firm nod. A single nod. Like a nod down. Not a... Not a like... Not like a... Uh, not like a... Hey, what's up? No, more like a... I've got places to be kind of nod. You know what I mean. You know what I'm saying. So the as uh, Star Child quickly realized, the medevac itself could not take the watchtower. Um, so I had to adapt. Yeah, did anyone choose never that we worked this out through diplomacy and long distance mining of gas gazers at the third? Did anyone have that? In fact, Star Child had 143 supply at nine minutes. That's not not terrible. He's got one one done. It's like a real macro build. Now he's got some creative interpretations as to how to take a third. Oh, wait. He's got a third command center in the main. What is this? On the other side, Astraeus. Still with the cooler name for sure, but... Giving plenty of time to like and subscribe and even check out the second channel and make sure you got those nightmare campaign VODs lined up. No, not Locos. All right, mine are, are beautifully labeled and I'm sure I finished much quicker, which is not always the case with Loco, but you never know, right? So just take that as you will and move on into a completely new conversation. Two battle cruisers. Nine minutes. We're hitting the ten-minute mark. Um, in game, not in the time. Okay, so when you have two different timelines, is it parallel timelines? Like when we're watching the game and speeding it up, is that speeding up time? I don't know. Ten minutes. So what maybe we need to do is jump into the future by skipping. Fo- oh, Star Trek again. I don't. That somehow doesn't screw up because they, they gotta, yeah. What what kind of rules are we playing? But we're playing by the I don't have maxed out battle cruisers yet. Ah uh, yes, um, the one liberator. Okay, Star Trek. Both these players rocking out at nearly one action every second, which, um. You can set your uh, temporal measurement devices, also known as <clears throat> clocks, it, by by those actions almost. All right, eleven minutes. But Star Child, with his expeditionary force, scouts the path, finds it pretty chill, and it something's gonna happen. The planetary and there it is, eleven twenty-eight. Somebody go back and figure out. Anyway, eleven twenty-eight. Oh, and now and now now that we lost one, might as well go for the. Oh my God, it's a massacre! Marines obliterated! The tanks doing what tanks do best. Where are the battle cruisers? Still though, oh my god. 
He stims everything. There's a tank. There's planetary. There's multiple tanks. He's going for the planetary. The Marines getting chewed away. The planetary's dying. More Marines coming out. He sieges it up. The planetary at 100 HP. He's not repairing. Yamato Valley broadside. Planetary dies. Everyone dies. And then the battle cruisers jump. I don't. <laughs> And this is why you change the hotkeys, so that way Yamato Cannon and Tactical Jump aren't right next to each other. Which is a lesson we all learn at least once. But... Um... <laughs> I don't, like... Hmm... Well, at the end of this first battle, we can tally our losses. A mere 6,000 minerals, 1450 gas, which includes 79 marines and a laundry list of most mech units you can build, compared to 2200-600 for Astraeus, who lost a planetary, some brave marines, a raven, and a handful of SCVs. Which brings us uh, the Vendaya scan, the Ventria scan in the wild. I came, I saw, and that was enough for me, says Astraeus. Oh, oh, you hit, well, is he moving? How many orbitals does he have? He has one beautiful depot wall that will keep out all the, all the, the fish, or whatever we have on Data C. Um, nope, that was, no, he still has energy. Wow, he had a lot of energy. Ah, yes, the three tank timing. Three tanks, which is significantly more than one, but also more than two. Three is the number of tanks we will have. You'll say thank you very much for those three tanks when I do my three tank timing. And that three tank timing, it's it's now on time. We've talked about timing before. Time and tanks and timing tanks. Those are several of the things that... Can exist and that three tank timing here oh coming right for the chest high bunker wall oh, he stems in and a lot of marines the, the liberator also there for moral support as well as the vikings the three tank timing is shut down but it was a decoy for the massive battle cruiser jump to the main oh vikings is yamato online indeed it is tactical jump off cooldown Blast a volley across and almost every single Viking taken down another Yamato. Wait, did he Yamato his own battle cruiser? Or I, I don't know what happened there. Anyways, despite all the macro and micro of Star Child, it looks like Astraeus is going to clear the entire main. He's got plus three, plus three on the way. He's got as many APM as it takes to micro battle cruisers, which is occasionally some. And also, he's got a 40 supply lead. Oh, oh, he's targeting the barracks while the high impact Thor is bringing down multiple cruisers. So maybe not the ideal. Maybe he should have stuck with the zero. But there are some turrets, unfortunately. Being able to teleport past is a big part of why battle cruisers are so good. Starchild seems to be taking this all in quite a surprising stride as he simply just expands away from the battle cruisers that are rampaging throughout his entire bank. The Amanos are off cooldown, blasting into the turrets. Starchild with his two tank timing. No, it's no three tank timing, but it's a two tank timing. And a two tank timing is better than a one tank timing, if only by double. Not triple, but a three tank timing is not always something everyone can have. It's a two tank timing is what we have here. And those two tanks better than one tank. Yes. Indeed. And even understanding he doesn't need to be in siege mode, though it might not be intentional. Well. That refinery is well worth losing these two tanks. 
as both, well, the, the TPM skyrockets, which is exactly what the turret missiles are designed to do. Skyrocket. It's like, because it's like a rocket that goes into the, the team, team skyrocket is blasting off again. You know, sometimes I think maybe we should edit these. So that, oh, well, that. But then we would miss the raw reaction to such an epic jump as he stumbles over the turrets to the turrets on the other side. Um, with one of the most tactical jumps I've ever seen. And down to two. The depots are kind of getting in the way of the Thors. He lowers the depots. Um, it looks like... Well, that Yamato... Go, you lo lo okay. Well, Starchild has not rebuilt his base and is being revealed. Which, you know, is kind of where it... it uh, uh, because, of course. So he did lose every single command center, as well as all but three SCVs. So that's not ideal. But on the bright side, he had five or six command centers of minerals in the... Oh, it's a three tank timing! Well, it's more like a 2.6 tank timing, but we're rounding up. Because a tank at 1 HP is still a tank that does 100% damage. So a three tank timing against the two Thors and a Viking. Which is, you know, surprising nod to Norse mythology here. The Viking providing support for the Thors. And, uh, unfortunately, oh, well the, Vi well, the Viking actually trying to impress the Thors, much like the Heart of the Swarm cinematic, drops down. The tanks unseat, but the Thors now step in, seeing the bravery of the Viking, understanding it should be supported, and lending their aid. Thor's hammer brings the point home and knocks out the last of that two, three tank timing. And now we got a game still, because Starchild is actually ahead on army supply, as essentially all of his supply is army. Um, they're both building command centers. Neither play right now. The income is approximately um, it it it, it, it yeah. It's, um, not what it once was. Well, the Thors, a tank on the high ground. Is there an orbital? I don't know if there's a barracks. He cannot make an orbital, because he doesn't have a rex. But down goes a command center. Um. Which, we are, well, on the bright side, as long as Astraeus doesn't lose every single SCV... He can still build approximately 25 more command centers. So, he shouldn't be running out of command centers too soon. Um, and that math was wrong. But it took you a second, didn't it? And what is a second? About how long it takes for each of these players to do one action if we're measuring. So, with that said... The Thors trying out all their weapons. Eventually, well, oh my god. Okay, so Astraeus is not going to be revealed as of yet. Because he still is long distance mining gas from his natural to his main orbital. As he continues to build up. I mean, at this point, if, if most of your experience is campaign missions, which is probably the best experience... Then you realize, well, at some point you just build the best army you can and you move out. Without risking the danger of, you know, expanding. Ever. One command center. Two command center. Does it, and, and, oh my god, is he also going to utilize the long distance third base strats? As they say, and as people, like, people try to correct me. But they had the wrong saying. Like they're they're like Winter, you got so close to the correct saying. But no, as it goes, like uh, great minds think alike, but less great minds think even more alike. -er. Forsooth, um, as was written on the halls of the 
of the Library of Alexandria when when Odin came down from the heavens and said, um, fuck bitches get money, I think was the translation. But that, that a lot of people found that quite rude, so they translated it to uh, the apocalypse or whatever. Uh, but that does seem like something Odin would say. I, I'm just saying, like, not that I know him personally. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying words, okay? Because right now, otherwise, I'd have to commentate the production tab. In the production tab, uh... <laughs> does not contain much content right now. Um... That there are. So. The unit's lost. How about that? We haven't gone through. Oh, wow. Within 100. Well, 101 more gas lost by Star Child. But also. Uh, about 10,500 more minerals. Which is not even one base of minerals. So. Really, at the end of the day. About even. Now Starchild finally getting some of those important upgrades. High sec auto tracking in production. He's building it at his engineering bay. No, not those. This one, which just got scouted by the volley of scans that Astraeus threw out. He only has the one. That was all four scans. Oh, the tank, a widow mine scampers in. They do scamper. That's what they do. They scamper. They're scamperers. Well, here comes this. A Ragnarok of Thor's. And I'm not talking about the Zerg player who let Maru smurf in the grand finals of GSL. Um, well, the Thor's are having a tough time getting up this ramp as they're not the most agile creatures. The Pretty much the box art is battling it out right now. And it looks like Star Child will be beaten back, but he does have two Widow Vines, and it still is not clear whether or not Astraeus understands what Widow Mines do. So there is a very real chance those Widow Mines get a surprising and game-changing amount of damage over the... Yep, well, those are... It, no, if, if you just... It, how about this? You siege up the tank on the Widow Mine so it can't see anything. In that way, it can't shoot. Duh. Has that, has that, why has nobody tried this? Just, just, just cover up, like, just, it's like, put, you know, like, there you go. See, oh, well, I guess that didn't work. Oh, yeah, if you get a little, oh my god, well, there goes, yep, that's where the widow, my, that is. I'm not sure exactly what's going through. Yeah, there it is. He tried a lot of things and eventually found a scan. Uh, so it appears he does understand, but he did have to consult the Prima Strategy Guide um, for that one. I. Well, as the APMs for both players averaging to nearly 60 exactly. Between them, of course. That temporal measurement device and it coming in handy here in this timeline. Okay. The upgrades are all over the place. We got two, two, two for Star Child, plus two infantry, plus weapons and armor, as well as plus two mech weapons. As well as plus one mech and three three ship weapons for Astraeus. Which, you know, the battle cruisers fully kitted out here. But you can give a toddler a Maserati, but you can't force him to drag race down the Vegas Strip. As the saying goes. Believe me, I've tried. Another command center. Astraeus still with money in the bank. Um, Starchild a bit more efficient spending. Of course, Starchild 
did only have three SCVs when he, he lost all of his command centers, so. We still got a little bit of long distance mining happening. The Marines scattered throughout. I do love the the depot blockade. He's he's sent to kept you never know. Those fish are dangerous. Look! Look at it! Look, it looks like like I don't trust him. Alright. Hmm. You see they they're pretending like they're just gonna stay down there. There's probably sharks. Like, shark sharks? Not even space sharks? Just regular sharks? I, I assume that was Astraea scanning random locations again. A Hellion. Alright. Oh, where are we going? Okay. Star Child. Ah, yes. On the road again. Going around the map. We're going around... I don't know where. I'm just checking. Oh, minerals. Got some minerals here. Jeff, will you shut them? <clears throat> Got some minerals here. More minerals there. Minerals at Jeff! <clears throat> Supplies nearly even, as we are only 28 minutes in, and there's still plenty of map to mine, considering how the uh, economic situation has developed thus far. In fact, they've only managed to mine out of about one and a half bases each. Um, so at this rate, oh no, well, that's it for Jeff. Uh, at this rate, we only have approximately two and a half hours left of this game before they mine out. So, no, don't check the video time. All right. Well, now that you're there, there, just like and subscribe and make make one of those very clever and original comments like, oh, my God, I didn't expect this much time was left when I saw X. I did not expect Y. And now Z happened. Which I, I try to tell everyone, but nobody ever listens to me, so I don't Well, there's a widow mine, which is the real victory here. Uh, is getting that widow mine burrowed. More than yep, yeah, well Yep, that's a widow mine. <laughs> Starchild selects it. Let's go to the star cam. Oh, look at that. Look at that split. He splits the Hellbat to go first and then runs all his Marines into the concave. So, you know, uh, not, not perfect. Uh, uh, the battle cruisers unleash all the Yamato cannons. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of those Thors didn't get the high impact mode uh, memo. The one of them did, but a little late to the party, realizing that everybody else was getting slotted. In fact, if you look closely, you'll notice a Thor underneath the battle cruisers. Um. Yes. Thor's just. Okay, well, Widow Mines are the choice. The Widow Mines so far have done quite well. Ooh, splash damage. I don't know if he has any more scans. The Widow Mines. Another Thor in high impact. Oh my god, there's more mines. And more turrets. Oh my. Well, down go multiple cruisers. He's just targeting the, the orbital, which is going to die. But the battle cruiser count is thinning out dramatically. Down goes another one. A Widow Mine is being repaired mid-battle. Oh no, that got the rest of them, and the Widow Mine will clean up the rest. Oh no, he jumps! And it actually blinks out of the mine. We got the SCVs floating up. Oh, he tries to... Well, he re he's really leaning on those mines. And the mines are bearing a surprising... Oh, uh, two tank... Uh, two tanks. Not one, but two tanks. Two tanks more than one tank. Over twice as good, the two tank timing. The two tank timing, good for a tactical withdrawal as well. The two tanks. 
Why two tanks? Why not? Yeah. Two tank timing, never a bad idea. Sometimes a less great idea, but... Well, with Thor's try running up the ramp for only the fourth time this game, but maybe the fifth time's the charm. Um, Star Child is down to... Mm, not particularly much income. <laughs> um, and then decides as the orbital's moving. So, Star Child may be struggling a little mm, with his economic decision. An interesting um, set of decisions. Oh, oh th by the way, the Thors. Astraeus chilling at 35 SCVs, of which several are working. I bet you never seen a command center here before. <laughs> he mined out the minerals and then moved the command center into where the minerals were to mine the gas from the safest possible location. <laughs> I well, here we are. And... Mm-hmm. Three tanks. Four tanks on the screen. A raven? Some... Ah, oh, he, he read the Twitch chat. It's like, why don't you just build a raven if you're struggling with detection? And we'll see how... All right, place your bets on how many Widow Mines he clears with that Raven. <laughs> well, we'll see. Meanwhile, the Thor migration. Four Thors and one Widow Mine ago, we migrated to the top left of Data C. And a lot of people said that wasn't a great idea, but we said, suck it. And thus it was decreed. The scans, the Vendaya scan, indeed. Some uh, the widow mine scampering. The APMs are still almost exactly sixty. Oh no! Come back, Astraeus. Sometimes, like ma struggling with maintaining focus, we've all been there. A cyclone. Optimistic choice from Star Child. Astraeus with still 6,000 minerals in the bank. But so far, besides a handful of unupgraded marines, he has yet to build any units that are particularly heavy on minerals. He's saving that in case he needs more commands. Wait, who scanned? Um. Oh, I, yes, that's a crab beetle. Not just a crab, not just a beetle. A credo. Yeah. <laughs> the Zerg are getting out of hand, even in Terran versus Terran. And it appears, as they say, great minds think alike, but not so great minds think somewhat more aliker at times, perchance. Astraeus, to the bottom right corner. Choose their command center, but guess what? Star Child is scouting. His scouting party. Six Marines. All right. I never noticed that skin. Like, they actually have, like, transparent helmets. You can... It almost looks like you can see their faces in there, which makes it worse, definitely. Actually looks sick. Yeah. He finds the base. 
as there are not that oh no th maybe this maybe if he builds three command centers nope the watchtower is taking the marine stim again in those scvs supply is freed up the watchtower spots it more barracks on the way as starchild inspired by the great victories achieved by his marines decides to just you know build more of them gonna build a armory wait that'll be his second armory as he technically still has all of his main by the way like he still has two engineering bays and arm but those are long forgotten in the ancient lands where our ancestors came from you know the main and the natural <laughs> Many, many moons ago, we it was told we mined in a safe location on the top of a ramp that was easily defensible. But then the battlecruiser nation attacked, and no safety was found. And that is why there are widow mines burrowed around you, young child. Just make sure to run when they get close. The supplies are dead even. The worker count's dead even. The upgrade's somewhat even. And while it has taken, it has been a long journey in rebuilding. Wow, the three mules. What a play. Starch out all about getting those minerals because he's going to spend them the moment he gets them, I'm sure. As we've seen throughout this game, Starch out a little bit more macro oriented, while Astraeus is more focused on concentrating and consolidating his power in a few units. And by that I mean just making a bunch of battle cruisers and hoping for the best. A scan. Yes. That's it. That's the end. Like, the scans have rarely been followed up with anything but more scans. But you can never be too careful. You know what's missing? Also, Starchild definitely use Select Army Hockey, because there are no longer any Marines on the other side of the map, which I think you just realized. Not a single sensor tower. I bet if anyone rediscovers sensor tower technology, suddenly both sides will remember sensor towers, but surprisingly, no one has it. Starchild, for the second time this game, in 40 minutes, is maxed out. Astraeus is continuing to build battle cruisers the only way he knows how. Slowly. He's mining from three gas gassers. <laughs> He's been disgustingly cost effective. Hmm. About two-thirds of Star Child's army will move out. It is time for battle yet again, the 40-minute mark. I know where we went with that accent, but... That is a lot of Thors, and some of them are even in high-impact mode. Which is significantly better for dealing with... Oh my god, the debris! They're gonna be wondering. And by the way, this map is actually the source of the durability simulator game called Wrath, a survival game where it makes you hate your friends and yourself. Um, yeah, and, and this is how it happened. Why do I need to drink water every four minutes? Okay, I got it. Why can't I go 14 feet without having a bite to eat? Why are there? Why is there always one shark? Not not multiple. Why is it just one? Just one shark? I don't. <clears throat> oh my God. After all this time, throughout the fire, 
and fury throughout all the Thors lost in the SCVs and the command centers. It has taken this long, but Star Child builds a fusion core. Though, does not have any Tech Lab starports, so he wants to build battle cruisers. He's finally rediscovered the ancient lands of his main and his third, which he was mining from to some extent, as you can tell from the minerals. And with the rediscovery of these ancestral resources, may in fact try to met or he turned the controller over to his brother. I don't know. I don't. He was like, "Why don't you build battle cruisers?" To which he says, "Oh, <laughs> wow, that's a lot of Thors." Currently, we're at twelve battle cruisers, four Thors, and eight tanks. Against 16 Thors. And the rest of the units don't matter. <laughs> They're there to draw fire. Jeez, that's a lot. The army supplies in the 150. The battle cruisers. I mean, Yamato Cannon Online. We got more planetaries being built. Astraeus has not really felt obligated to move out of his base with anything but tactical jump thus far. We'll see if that changes. Well, that is a chonky army right there. These stems. Wow. Very, very confident stem. Astraeus. Ast Astraeus. Um. Ah, uh, wow. A moment of shock from both sides. But now Mantle is joined. The, the building auto he jumps. Which was probably not the button he was going for! But now Yamato and tanks underneath! It's it's impossible to tell! I it uh, oh, wow, that was not that close. A Viking just kinda kills a ray. Yeah, that the battle cruisers win. Um I don't know how this Viking got here, but This has now freed up supply for Star Child to go for battle cruisers. Of which no, he doesn't have enough to queue any. He has none queued up. Those are just just building the battle cruisers. And some Thors. He actually doesn't really have much gas income. He's mining off of what, two geysers? And then one out of three on a rich Vespian geyser. And he technically has these, if he remembers. And then one in the ancestral lands. Astraeus, on the other hand, has decided his course of action is to continue. Stay the course. He's building a lot of ravens, which is a... a, a oh, wait. Is it time for the great attack of Astraeus? As he's finally looking to move out with that ground army. <gasps> A widow mine is spotted and cleared! The ravens pay for something, at least. Star Child, his army in shambles after that disastrous fight. The battle cruisers, a massive danger. But will the widow mines be enough to hold? He does have ravens, but. Um, Yamato, counter Yamato's! So it's 3-3 three, three versus plus one, and that's it. Those battle cruisers essentially not doing any damage to the other to Astraeus' cruisers. It's some it's like one damage. Like <laughs> it is it, nearer to nothing. Now this is not the best position here for for Star Child. He's been in a tough spot before. 
and he may have to retreat back to his main at the end of all this. There's a planetary, there's half a dozen turrets. There's still a lot of work to be done for either side to win this game, okay? Like, that much, oh, the fusion core is a quick foray into battle cruisers shot down by the superior cruisers of Astraeus. And a moment of respite. Starchild building three starports. Um, the SCVs will brave the gauntlet of mines in order to repair. A Thor will stim down. I don't know if we've seen a single medevac this entire game. Oh, there were some in the very beginning. All right. Yes, eight medevacs have died. Mm, another fusion core in somewhat of a vulnerable location. Astraeus is uh, really, he's trying to beat him down with the back of a spoon right now, it kind of feels like. Occasionally scoops out a base and then snacks on it for a bit and moves on with his fight. <laughs> Astraeus building SCVs. Which is, you know, so, something he doesn't partake in very often. Oh, Starchild transferring SCVs as he ran out of something. I'm not sure exactly. <clears throat> SCVs were trying to come to this location for some undisclosed reason. I, I think he's scouting. Don't worry, a battle cruiser. You got a permit? He did not have a permit. Meanwhile, the SCVs are not on auto repair. They were simply on right click or he, he actually hit the repair hotkey. Okay, yeah, yeah, he's still they're still not on auto repair. He's he's manually repair. He's very precise about his repair. One tank. One tank is the number. Oh that Thor. Oh well. Thor. Wow, that... That... <laughs> sir. Well, he kills the Thor. And that is why armor upgrades are important. Just shredded that armor like paper right there. Jeez. And Thors have two base arms. Is that true anymore? I don't know. It doesn't matter. As... Well, it's dead now. The turrets didn't get many hits off. Um, what? Battle cruiser? Bat the trickle, the trickle jumps. He's jumping into bases that have long since mined out. Astraeus cannot respond because he he just used this tactical jump against that egregious Thor. Astraeus is very optimistic about the availability of resources at the location he just cleared out. Um, the battle cruisers that wow, what a triple prong strike by Starchild. As really in a straight well, there goes that one. Down goes a planetary, an orbital. Meanwhile, the, the he's still slapping. He's he's bashing the bases with a spoon. He's working his way through. We're probably waiting on those battle cruisers jump cooldown, which just cooled down. <laughs> uh, three battle cruisers jump. Now, the battle cruisers of Astraeus are still far superior to the point where I think we've tested this before. One three-three battle cruiser can survive a fight, assuming no Yamato, with five unupgraded battle cruisers. Four or five is the number. It's at least four. These marines have two, too. So they do some damage. Another ba battle... Oh, SCVs are chasing. Um, the battle cruisers are... Astraeus seems to be having a bit of a breakdown when faced with this. That's not a planetary. The lack of planet... A star child is just... The multi-pronged assault... 
The battle cruisers are on the other side of the map. Is there high sec auto tracking? No, he has three, three Yamato and plus two mech. That's it. That's it. The turrets actually oh, almost, almost get one. He's got a raven here as he carefully scours the map. Unfortunately, Astraeus, oh, he's, um, he's decided in such, is it, he, okay, it's going down. It's happening. What, what do we do? Yamato, Yamato does change everything. But the Astraeus has way better cruisers, but Yamato does direct damage. The Thors, though. Astraeus' cruiser standing strong and blasting through, trying to target fire. It's not enough, the auto turrets. The upgrades are really, 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 really important here. Oh, he's trying to Yamato. And Astraeus' cruiser battered down the inferior fleet. And just like that, Starchild may have tactical jumped his, what we might call a lead away. The Marines are here to help. It metaphorically, one will survive. <laughs> yeah, the upgrades are quite, and in case you wanted a demonstration, um, the, the battlecruiser upgrades are possibly the most important in, that may be the most important interaction of upgrades in the entire game in how much they affect these fights. <laughs> they attack so much and for relatively little damage. These battle cruisers, a single skyrocket. If, if, okay, the, the turrets are chipping away. He's got a half battle cruiser of HP. Star Child, that Thor is definitely walled in here. Astraeus has money in the bank, but he's down to six SCVs. Though he, though he does technically have access to resource. Oh my god! Well, somebody, he's, he, he now realizes <gasps> the job. He intercepts. I don't think there's enough now. He's got plus two, plus one. He. And the tactical jump of Astraeus comes up a little, a little short. After 57,000 minerals, 18,000 gas, Astraeus with enough money in the bank for half a dozen more cruisers, but just unable to bring that spoon to bear and carve out enough. Just could not lay down the killing blow, despite his overwhelming cruiser superiority. And that, well, that was certainly something. If it's something you liked, you might like this as well. No, not Twitch chat. Of course not. But... But at the end of the day, I hope I made your day a little bit better. I hope they did as well. And I hope you check out the whole playlist and more of Bronze League Heroes. Good luck, have fun. Stay tuned.